Up next is Honorable Dr. Ajaja Gabriel Aridru, former Minister of State for Finance, Planning and Economic Development. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fungi. Good morning, participants. Uh, as has been, I've been introduced already, mm -hmm. I was a former Minister of State for Finance, uh, deputizing Matia Kasaija. Energy has always been my passion, even though I'm a civil engineer, but energy has been my passion for the simple reason that any country cannot develop without power. Just to give you statistics. Electricity was discovered, I think, in 600 BC. Now, what is called the current, what we know as the current electricity, was discovered in 1876. The first bulb was invented by Thomas Edison in 1880. But here we are today. If you look at the statistics of energy that has been generated in the, around the world. The country that leads is USA, which generates about 4.12 trillion gigawatts of electricity. Germany generates about 218 gigawatts. South Korea, I think it's 183 gigawatts. So the importance of energy cannot be underestimated. Development mirrors the energy production in a country. Uganda, for example, has energy production. The Minister of, the Minister of Energy official is here. I don't want to give erroneous uh, figure, but I think we are almost getting to about 1,500 megawatts. Is that correct? Just around there. 100, no, 1,500 megawatts. That's what ele electricity, how much electricity we're generating in Uganda. But you know very well that everything today runs on power. It does not matter whether it is your laptop, whether it is your iPhone, whether it is factories, it is whatever it is, it runs on power. Now, there are several sources of energy, but I will only focus on one, and that's the renewable energy. Of course, the renewable energy, as you know, comprises of solar, hydropower, wind, geothermal, etc. Uganda has a lot of potential on the geothermal. I'm going to focus more on the geothermal potential in Uganda. If you go to Kenya, Kenya currently generates about 1,000 megawatts of geothermal power in the Naivasha Valley. I've had the opportunity to go there. It's a marvelous, marvelous sight. When you go there, you can only but get humbled. But in Uganda, we have not had the opportunity, not even generate one kilowatt of geothermal. How much potential do we have? Over 2,000. And that is all in the western part of the Rift Valley. So, currently, I work for AXA after leaving government and politics, I work for AXA Infrastructure Development Incorporated company in Canada, based in Vancouver, BC. We signed a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Energy to develop the geothermal potential in Uganda. I can confirm that we have done what is called the pre-feasibility pre study and the report was presented to the Department of Geothermal Resources at Entebbe about two or three weeks ago, two weeks ago. The study that we have done confirms that, yes, indeed, we have geothermal potential in Uganda, specifically in the following areas. Chitagata, for those of you who have been there, Katue, Chikorongo area, and also Simliki. You can actually see steam coming and boiled water coming from underground. But then the question is, why has it taken 
so long for Uganda to be able to have that leap. And for statistics purposes, Uganda started exploring the geothermal potential in Uganda in 1935. How many years are we now? This is coming to almost 90 years later. Not even one megawatt has been generated. But everybody knows the potential is there. The question then is, where is the problem? The problem lies in two things. Policy, and secondly, the fact that the government, through Ministry of Energy, are not prepared to take that risk. Money is not the issue. I have always said, because I worked in finance for 10 years, you can get money anywhere in this world at a rate that's affordable to, to you as a country. So what have we done? AXA Group, as I've said, have completed the pre-feasibility study. Now we have one more study that we have to do, which is the feasibility study of the geothermal. That we shall finance as the AXA Group. Now the next stage is going to be what was called the, the drilling stage. And that is where I want the PS, I, I, the PS presented to take note of that. We are now getting into the drilling stage where you must hire rigs similar to what you have in the oil wells and you must drill about two to three kilometers in the ground. Two to three kilometers. And it's an expensive venture, PS. We're going to have discussions with the Ministry of Energy in terms of how to tap that potential. To hire that rig will not cost less than $100,000 per day just to hire that rig. And for you to reach a depth of about three kilometers, you need two months of continuous drilling. You can do the mathematics. That will put, take you to about $5 million just to drill one rig, to drill one hole. And we have identified three uh, sites which we believe we can be able to heat steam that will be able to generate now electricity. Three. And in those three sites, the temperature gradient, in other words, if you drill, you begin to get the temperature as you go down. It's about 36 degrees per kilometer, which means every kilometer, the temperature increases by about 36 degrees. In two kilometers, you'll get to about 72 by the time you get to about three kilometers, you hit the temperature which requires water to boil and to get steam. That is three kilometers. So it's an expensive venture, PS. Uh, we have already given our recommendations to the commissioner in charge of geo geothermal resources. And we're hoping that we can be able to engage you as the ministry to move forward. Now, there is w the policy issue regarding geothermal, which I talked, and also the other renewable energies. If you go to, I'm sure you have, if you go to Germany, people produce electricity on top of their, they have solar panels on top of their roofs. And they generate electricity for their own use and consumption. But if you have an excess generation in your house, you sell it to the national grid. So they have what is called a bidirectional meter. That meter turns one way. If you have excess, it goes into the network. Now, if you don't have on cloudy days like today, the, nat the national grid supplies you with electricity. At the end of the month, you balance. Whoever has sold more to the other, you balance. And the German, I think, generates about, I can't remember the exact figure, I think it's 42,000 megawatts just from geo, uh, from, uh, from solar. So where the policy issue is that you need to, if you need to promote energy production in this country, there have to be changes in government policy where private generators can be able to generate and sell electricity to the national grid and vice versa. The cost element which I talked about is that the government must be prepared to put seed money 
for the geothermal to be able to get that fast power production from geothermal. And I can tell you, PS, I can tell you, the day you hit the first steam, financiers will come. Forget about World Bank. Those are, they are in their, as the president, his ex the president says, they're just full of themselves. They don't understand what we Africans feel about our culture. If you hit that first team, PS, I can guarantee you, financiers will run to you and give you that money to be able to finance some of these projects, especially the geothermal. They'll finance it for you. The other things we'll discuss not here, how we can be able to actually exploit the geothermal potential uh, in this country. I will have gone on and on, but just to suffice to say that I think we're moving very, as AXA group, uh, we're moving very swiftly, especially in the geothermal potential. I think my chairman has already been introduced uh, with the, his, his, uh, his assistant here. So otherwise, thank you very much. We'll be ready to take any questions uh, uh, at the end of the presentation. Thank you.